Um, my name is Justin Ward, and um, our senior design project was sponsored by IBM, and uh, we were doing tests on a, a, an appliance, a network appliance made by IBM called Data Power. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, this is an actual picture of the Data Power. It's uh, pretty small. It's, it's about the size of a normal router. Um, we'll, we'll start off down here. IBM Data Power Appliance is uh, focused for an enterprise network. Um, most people are familiar with a typical IP network, but um, this was made for a front end for an enterprise network, say for an example company EB, um, excuse me, eBay. Um, they will use the data power for specific functions that I'll explain. Um, data power is a hardware specific um, appliance that is made for processing XML. So um, without going into a whole lot of background about XML, the whole purpose of XML is you can sort of think about it as a data format um, for web services. So say you were on the internet and you were using a simple uh, converter to convert between two different temperatures, say Fahrenheit to Celsius. Um, that actual function is called a web service and the data that goes between those web services is, is normally in XML format. XML is basically human readable text so it is very process intensive to uh, to filter, to read through, to parse, you know, to pull data out or to put data in XML. So it was causing a lot of stress on enterprises back end servers. So therefore IBM said we have a solution for you and they created data power which is hardware specific again for processing XML. So our purpose was to uh, learn XML because we didn't have experience with that, to learn data power because we didn't have experience with that either and to just run tests with different configuration levels on data power. So we'll just start here on this first graph. We'll take this uh, really jagged green line for example. Um, this is a, our setup was client PC hooked up through data power and then hooked up to a server. Um, think about this first green line without the data power is typically just client to server. Processing a file, say we sent to the server, is pretty arbitrary. And our, as our file size got bigger, um, you can see that the processing time grew linearly and it increased. So as you can see, this is very jagged, it's not very predictable, and uh, the last file size we sent up to was over 10 seconds of processing time. So then we uh, ran the same test with the same files over data power, putting data power between our client and our server to um, sort of do some pre-processing of this XML data and extracting the, the numbers that the server actually required. And um, then you can see the processing time that it took with data power in the middle significantly decreased. Um, and then when we're looking at data power, the actual results, it's better to look at this graph. So there are different configurations, there are different things you can do with data power. Um, so this is without, there are, there are certain things you can do with XML validating it to make sure it's uh, a correct file. So without validating that in XM in, uh, in data power, you can look at uh, the server, you know, the processing time still increase, but they're a lot lower than our server. And then we simply add in the validation step within data power, and you can see that the processing time is higher than without the validation, but still significantly less than what our server does. So that and basically is the end result is um, playing around with data power and seeing how it offloads all of this intensive uh, computations from the server and places them on data power. And so the last sort of summary graph is uh, we added up all the processing time it took for the server to process these files and that's what you see in this tallest bar graph here. Um, 244 seconds it took. And then sticking data power in the middle without, I mean excuse me, with a validation 55 seconds and then without a validation 14 seconds. So this really shows the significance of data power and uh, what we were trying to accomplish in our project.